Hey everyone and uh, welcome to another Spot of Color demo. My name is Hannah Eichen, the owner of Spot of Color in Abingdon, Virginia, and today we are going to talk about how to make acrylics and watercolors using our dry natural earth pigments. Acrylics are super easy, so I'm just going to talk you through that process. Uh, all you need is an acrylic medium, such as a golden, say, matte, because this is what I have, medium, and some of our natural pigments. To mix this, you just need a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning you need one unit measure of medium to one of the exact same unit measure of the pigments. So say you want to make a cup of whatever this is. You need half a cup of this medium and half a cup of this pigment. That'll give you a cup of paint. Um, now, like I said with the oils, the ratio may change just a little bit depending on which pigment you're using. And it's also up to personal preference. Sometimes you want something a little more opaque, so you're gonna wanna put a little more pigment in and a little less medium. It's up to you. Uh, and then you can store that in an airtight container uh, and then you can thin it with water. And that's it. That's how you make acrylic paints. Super easy. We've got mediums in store. We've got dried pigments. Make your own. Now, watercolors. They are a bit trickier. With that, you are going to need a few more items. You will need some gum arabic. We've got a powder version, so I'm going to show you how to go from powder to liquid using this powder. A little bit of honey, some clove oil or thyme oil or other preservative, uh, and some hot water. Now, uh, to start, we are going to create our liquid gum arabic. To do that, we're going to use about a quarter cup of this powdered gum arabic. And we are going to, hmm, we're going to mix it into our half cup of water, hot water. You don't want cold water. Now, this isn't baking, so you don't need to be perfectly precise on this. It's not a big deal. A little under, a little over. That's about a quarter cup. Dump it in. And give it a mix. A whisk would probably be better, but since I'm in the store, I don't have a whisk with me. So I'm just going to use this powder. <laughs> you've got that pretty well mixed, you are going to want to add 1.6 tablespoons of honey. Uh, this is just for this measurement. Obviously, if you're making a larger batch, scale up or scale down. Um, let's get my tablespoon measure. Again, you don't have to be super precise. Honey is really messy to work with. So, there is about one and a little over half. That might be too much, but we'll see. All right. Great. Give that a good mix. The heat from the water is helping us mix in this honey and melt it up. Great. So now I have a gum arabic solution. That's it. Uh, in order to preserve this for a little bit longer, people will use some sort of preservative. Um, I'm going to use this clove oil. You can also use thyme oil. Uh, you can also use sodium benzoate, which is a food grade preservative. Um, I was over at Blue Hills Market yesterday and I, they've got all these essential oils there. Uh, that's where I picked up my honey, and that's where I got my essential oil. So I'm just going to use this essential oil because it smelled so good. Clove oil smells awesome. Mm. <laughs> so I'm just going to drop in one drop 
that was probably closer to two. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Stir that in. Now this can be stored in your fridge in an airtight container for really as long as it still smells okay. <laughs> and since it's just honey and water and a little bit of preservative, it's gonna last quite some time. Um, yeah. So there we go. That smells really good. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. <laughs> Don't do it. Drink out of your other mug. That's not paint water. Mmm. Great. All right. So now we've got our gum arabic solution. Um, all we need to do to create kind of our watercolor medium is to take some of that solution uh, and mix it with some more honey. That's it. You're just making it thicker. So for this, you need one part honey to one part gum arabic solution. So let's see. Let's use a teaspoon. We need nine teaspoons of this gum arabic solution. Just need a little bit more honey to thicken that up. One teaspoon. That is a one to nine ratio. If you aren't familiar with ratios, that's how you get to it. One part of your one ingredient to whatever part of your other ingredients. In this case, it's one to nine. All right, let's give that a good mix. This is this smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, who knew paint could smell this good? Don't sniff it. Just watch. All right. Next, now you've got your medium, for lack of a better word here. It's uh, it's a little soupy. It's a little runny. It's not super thick. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. It's a mixture. Uh, now, when you're mixing up your pigments, it's a one to one ratio. One to nine, honey to gold, gold, gum arabic is your medium. One to one, medium to pigment. Great. It's a lot of ratios. So. Um, we're going to switch to, since I've destroyed and muddied all of these, uh, we're going to do just a half teaspoon of pigment onto your glass palette. Glass works better than plastic, y'all. Just a little bit there. And then you just need, I'm going to wipe this off so I don't contaminate my medium. We're volcanoing again here. Great. And a little bit of your medium. One to one ratio. I can never get this volcano to work for me. It will always spill over. It's fun. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to mix this up on our palette just like we did with the oil paints. Just smoosh it together. Now with this you really you really want to work it for quite some time. Um, for some reason this just doesn't want to mix as quickly as the oils do. So you really want to mix for a while. If you can see how rich that color is just on the palette it's beautiful it smells good now I 
it is a bit runnier than I think I would like. I must have mismeasured something somewhere. But that's okay because watercolor gets water added to it. We're just going to run with it. Mixing it up. My clothes smell so good. All right. Probably should mix it for longer than that, but since I am not wanting to edit this video, we're going to call it there. It is a little bit runnier, um, it's drippy, it's not really, not quite what we wanted, we wanted it a little bit thicker, uh, and that may come down to just the fact that I may have undermeasured my gum Arabic just a little bit, uh, you want it a little bit thicker than that. You can always fix a slightly runny like this. Um, with just a little bit of cornstarch slurry and just add that in. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna make the pigment a little less potent but it will be a little bit thicker. Uh, cool. Alright so I'm just gonna show you comparison of this watercolor with a two watercolor that I bought several years ago which is just this Van Gogh uh, this color is specifically ultramarine deep, and this is ultramarine blue, so it's a little bit of a different color, but it will give us pretty good comparison. And I am going to use these water brushes. If you haven't used these water brushes, they're really cool. The water is stored in the handle of the brush, so you don't need to dip as often. You can just squeeze the brush a little bit and more water will come out. They're really neat. I painted with them for the first time uh, a few days ago, and I just, I love it. They're great. Okay, so first I'm going to show you this color that I got out of the tube on this cold press watercolor paper. So, here it is. Tube. Tube. Great. I'm going to switch brushes entirely so we don't contaminate, so you're not like, oh, but you mixed them. New brush. Here we are going to pick up a little bit of this mixed watercolor we just mixed. And. Check that out. Look at that pigment saturation, how bright and brilliant it is compared to the tube paint. It's pretty amazing. This stuff is so pretty and it smells so good. <laughs> Great. So that is how you mix watercolor paint. Also super easy, super fast. Um, you get a beautiful color out of it. It's nice and thick. Um, the tube paint felt really liquidy when I was putting it on, whereas with this it felt a little bit thicker, a little more resistance. That's the honey. Um, it just gives it a little more body, which is kind of fun. Um, and you can always thin this out more and more with more water, uh, make it thinner and thinner. Now, I've got this pile of pigment on my palette. What do you do with the leftover, right? <laughs> so what's awesome about this is that you can store this in a jar, airtight jar, and keep it that way. Or you can put this into some of those little trays like you'd get with some of the, um, the travel pocket books. Uh, you can put them in those little trays or old makeup trays if you dust out all of your clean out all of your makeup out of the tray, you can put it in there and you can let it dry and then you've got cake watercolor, which is cool. <laughs> uh, you can make your own and then you can pre-mix your own colors into that little pan if you 
are very specific about what colors you like to use for your landscapes or whatever. Um, you can drop in your own custom colors, which is really neat, uh, especially as you start to run out of what was already in there. You know, it's hard to find replacement cake pans, just individual colors. So you have to buy a whole other set when you don't really need to. Um, you can make your own and then store it in those pans, which is great. I'm just gonna put it in this little palette tray and turn it into a cake that way. Um, and I will share a picture of what that looks like later on and probably a quick video of reactivating it just so you can see it being reactivated. And that's it really, super easy. So these are our natural earth pigments in their little packets that we sell in store. You can purchase online. We can ship to your door. Uh, if you live in Abingdon, we can deliver to your house. Uh, no contact delivery if you would like, since we are in a pandemic. Uh, just let me know when you order and I will make sure that it is delivered, no contact. We'll just drop it on your porch and let you know that it's there and then you can come out and pick it up. And that's it. All of this leftover solutions and things, I'm just gonna store in a fridge and use for paintings later because cool, I now have my own watercolor <laughs> that I didn't have to find too. So cool. Um, and that's, that's it guys. Thanks for joining. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some more videos coming out soon. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube uh, or you can find videos being uploaded on Facebook, Instagram, on our website, I'll have a section where you can look at all of the previous videos I've made. Uh, and yeah, thanks for coming in uh, and I'll see you next time.